um, I remember that uh, in one of the papers I read of you, you talked about uh, the Raman effect and how despite it was theorized in India by Sir C.V. Raman, it was uh, commercialized in the West. So um, as, as a young scientist who you know, wants to uh, do science in India, uh, it's, it's, uh, it would be very great that if you can tell us how to establish a pathway between inventions that are coming from research and let's say startups who have the potential of using this innovation and commercializing it as well. So if you can. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you, you people are very lucky, by the way, again. What has happened is that in our time, of course, it is not that people did not do that. I mean, I remember Kiran Mazumdar Shah, mm. who is a programmer today, Biocon's yeah. owner, for example. She started in a garage with 10,000 rupees. And I remember I was on the board of directors of TDICI, the first venture capital company, when we backed her up. All right. So what is required is talent, technology, and trust. You have all the talent. You have all the technology. You have to be trusted, and people have to invest in you. We invested at that time in Kiran and see where they are, uh, where she is today. So the major challenge uh, in India has been the lack of trust. Mm -hmm. you, you get the point. And the moment you get that factor out, then there is no issue at all. I remember, to, just to illustrate the point, and then I will come back to the answer. I remember once Bill Gates had come to India, and they organized a dinner with him, uh, dinner come discussion with him. And uh, Anand Mahindra was there. Then uh, Nandad Nilakani was there. Uh, Arun Mahira was there. Uh, Ravi Venkatesan, myself, five, six of us. And at that time, I remember Bill Gates mentioning something interesting. He said, uh, uh, he, he gave, uh, a talk in Harvard University, and the, uh, uh, the commencement lecture, as they call it, you know, when mm -hmm. they graduates. And there he said, I declared myself as uh, the most successful dropout from Harvard University. And <laughs> then narrated us a story on how he started. Uh, he said those were early days. And somebody was building a hardware, computer hardware in uh, in US uh, and uh, uh, he phoned them up and said that you are building hardware, you require software. I'll give you that. Now he was barely 18, 19 year old at that time. So you can uh, hear the voice and say, oh, who is this bacha who is um, giving me hardware and all that. So he said, I expected them to give the phone down, you know, as soon as they heard me. They did not. You know what they said? We are not ready. Come after six months. And then Bill Gates told us, thank God they said, come after six months, because I was not ready. I didn't have the software that I was on. <laughs> now, what is the story here? The story is that they had a trust in this young man yes. that he will do. Yes. And he had a trust in himself, self-belief. That's why I said, Atma Nirvar Bharat with Atma Vishwas. Mm -hmm. That Atma so young people must develop that confidence that we can do that. And uh, I think that's the first thing. And I'm seeing this in your generation now. On the other day, I was talking to uh, some young people. I always talk to young people. Then I feel young. There is a <laughs> I'm doing with you now. So I said, uh, and I'm very proud of our higher educational system. You know, I'm a traveling salesman as far as India is concerned. I always talk about that. So I said, uh, look at Satya Nadella mm -hmm. of our higher education, became the CEO of Microsoft. I look at Sundar Pichai, product of Indian education, became CEO of Google. So I said, like that, you should also become then one young fellow uh, of the same age as uh, you, you two are, got up. And he said, you don't know what, what is going on in our mind. So I said, I thought I said something nice, you know, such a model. He said, no. Sir, in your generation, your only objective was to go to US somehow. Mm. The next generation, not only to go to US, but get a job in Microsoft or mm. Google. Next generation, not only go to US, not only join Microsoft, but become CEO. He said, our generation, no, we want to create our own Microsoft 
granting a patent if it takes so long then how will you sort of do that yes. so now we have created green track hmm. right so any startup who moves very fast in comparison to the others etc so i think these are the right times for young people to think dare all right with new ideas and the government is there to support and many industries now by the way uh, you will find like for example uh, in the last 18 months reliance has taken stake in 18 uh, startups yes they are looking at this as a source of uh, so uh, uh, talent as well as technology so the picture has changed completely and is far far better than the kiran muzumdars of this world you know uh, uh, in late 80s uh, had to struggle that's uh, definitely quite inspiring and to know yes. uh, that the startup culture in india is quite changing and it motivates the youngsters like us to pursue uh, and uh, actually my next question is also has some personal touch to it because i recall myself a uh, year back around 3rd or 4th january when i met you in coep uh, you were uh, a, a guest lecturer for a workshop and i had this idea since then in my mind working in semiconductor research that uh, in our country uh, we are still deprived of the device technology and whereas we see the countries like in the us or in taiwan where they are going sub 10 nanometer silicon microfabrication or even sub 5 nanometer fabrication and we still are quite far i would say but in a country where we have uh, at least 3 4 devices in our homes we have so many of semiconductor uh, and il- electronic devices in our hands but as a country we lack uh, significantly in manufacturing uh, such facilities so as a as an enthusiastic uh, researcher and uh, uh, let's say a budding uh, innovator in this uh, microtechnology Uh, how do you think we should go for it because this field is something which needs a huge amount of investment for the clean room maintenance and everything so uh, compared to any making an app it is definitely uh, quite difficult and challenging thing so how would you guide us towards uh, making this happen yes i think this uh, has to be looked at at the policy level you know where our investments are uh, basically uh, made yeah and uh, i totally agree with you that this is one area uh, where uh, you know i i remember we had built a foundry by the way in chandigarh yes basically mm-hmm. you know but unfortunately uh, there was a fire there and got gutted and after that uh, the investments in this particular area were offered but the, uh, at that time the systems were such that uh, they did not agree for them to sort of set it up now we are saying foreign direct investment and so on so forth. so we miss the bus so as to say but i don't worry about the sort of miss buses we have to create our own buses like i said our uh, sort of on doors and uh, if you see the new science technology innovation policy that is on the anvil now uh, there are critical areas that have been identified by the way in which country has to make major investments you know yeah and uh, what you say is definitely one of the uh, sort of uh, priority areas and we'll have to get foreign uh, direct investment in this because we are not talking about small numbers yeah now as a uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, poli- uh, geopolitical situation changes as you can quite clearly see uh, china has lost the trust of in, uh, uh, trust of the world and to me that is an opportunity mm-hmm. for us to foreign direct investments and make india as a kind of a manufacturing hub all right because they don't want to depend upon china so i think the uh, the change picture so as to say the change aspirations will make it happen the way uh, we had uh, sort of thought planned but we didn't have investment you will see them uh, flowing up just watch for next couple of years definitely that's quite yeah. promising <laughs> yeah. and uh, our last question is also continuing the same track of startups that uh, we see a disproportionate amount of youth that moves towards the it fields right now and uh, even with the background of basic and physical sciences people tend to get a job in it and you know work in uh, software companies uh, so how can we direct our youth 
to the to towards the fields which need innovation for example in in the medical devices now we are having a lot of uh, challenges that we face in the covid times uh, so when i was going through your website actually i saw two prize winning uh, startups which were uh, towards the field of medical devices and even one for the which is related to the icus for the covid uh, infected people so it seems quite promising but still we see like a lot of people who just go towards making apps or to you know go towards software so mm. how can we have people who can work in all other areas all innovative areas which we lack here i think uh, uh, i'm glad that you are going to put this up uh, on uh, youtube or whatever you have so i want to send a message yeah the first thing is that it had a very different connotation in the past mm -hmm. we don't talk about it anymore we talk about digital mm -hmm. you understand and there are exponential technologies that we talk about like big data analytics artificial intelligence blockchain virtual reality augmented reality internet of things etc etc so we should not be talking in terms of it alone mm -hmm. yeah we should be talking in terms of the entire digital universe okay mm -hmm. once you do that every company if it is not becoming digital it will vanish yeah or in other words these young people who are coming they are not sector specific like mm -hmm. it was industry it is not going to be the case mm -hmm. it is going to be that they are going to be everywhere they will be in medical health insurance finance manufacturing etc because everything is going to be transferred digital yes. you, you get the point yes uh, to illustrate the point for example uh, let us say uh, you are great in uh, software development let us say where will you use your skills for okay now this uh, awards that you talked about on my website they are what are called as anjani mashilkar inclusive innovation awards yes anjani mashilkar my mother you know uh, in her name i have created this is the 10th year of the award and this award is inclusive innovation award mm -hmm. that means making high technology work for the poor okay inclusive okay not for all uh, making high technology work only for the rich no <laughs> because making high technology work for the rich is very easy yeah low <laughs> technology work for the poor is very easy but mm -hmm. making high technology work for the poor is difficult right yes. so all the awards are given on 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 that now i'll take a, a point to illustrate what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. okay let us say there is a woman in a village old woman and she has uh, um, let's say heart pain in the middle of the night and she had to be taken for an ecg you will put her in the bullock cart or a scooter or a motorcycle or a jeep and take her few kilometers mm -hmm. but supposing that ecg could be taken instantly like we have something like thermometer simple yes equivalent of that and right there she can take uh, the ecg and that ecg gets transmitted uh, to the best expert anywhere it will be like dream isn't it yes that yeah. it will go and so on so forth etc they will say this is impossible how can you create and that to affordably by the way you should mm -hmm. not pay more than 5 rupees for that you you get the point because then you cannot say 5000 rupees 5 rupees now this is one of the breakthroughs rahul rastogi has and that is in front of you this is portable ecg wow wow what is portable ecg uh, you see here these two sensors right mm -hmm. so you put your two thumbs like this for 15 seconds yeah you see the sensor here mm -hmm. this is your heart 15 15 15 seconds then below the heart this is above the heart below the heart 15 15 15 seconds so supposing you take 3 minutes within 3 minutes if you have downloaded an app called sanket your ecg goes to you Wow, and it wow. is as accurate as a twelve lead, which you get when you go there, lie down, the nurse puts twelve lead and all that. As accurate as that. Wow, and you can go on Amazon and buy it. This is called Sanket, Sanket Life, as it is called now. All right. 
cost 2500 rupees for this that's all wow. but this is one time cost mm. it doesn't get exhausted like paper gets exhausted when you write this will be for you, with you forever so each household can afford to sort of have one yeah. for a family of 12 let us say for next 10 years that's true now this 80% of the magic in this is software oh hmm. you get my point now you can see this is one type of device <laughs> Mm-hmm. You talked about uh, uh, Dozy. Yeah. See, today, once again, there is a spot in Maharashtra on, on uh, this thing. And uh, you remember the kind of difficulty we had with ICU beds running short and all that, etc. Yes. Now, this Dozy who startup who got Anjali Marshall care about this year, what has it done? You have your bed. He has created a system with IoT, Internet of Things, with sensors and all which you push under the bed hmm. and set up your parameters, by the way. And eighth, if you put uh, uh, oxygen uh, sort of uh, monitor here, basically the sensor, mm-hmm. are measured with 98.4% accuracy and at a cost, which is just 5% of a normal IC. Now, what are the advantages? First, any void you can turn into IC, hmm. right? Secondly, one of the challenges with health worker is a direct contact with the patients. No. Mm-hmm. Right. Third, all the data are remotely stored in cloud, is accessible to everybody, etc. Transformative, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Now, I, these are just two examples. So if you go through each of these, the third one, I'll tell you, breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, now, Mirsha, he created something where, as you know, for breast cancer, uh, you have to have that uh, painful mammography. Mammography. So, yeah. He said nothing to it. And he created something which is bigger than this, of course, which you move over your breast, basically. Once again, it's digital in a sense. There is some very sophisticated software that has been built in this. Mm-hmm. And uh, for just $1, uh, you have that. Now this is going to 25 countries by the way, with G life wow. yeah. Just one dollar. Why? Because it is US FDA certified. That means it is as accurate as a normal mammography test. It is European Union certified. It is as accurate as normal. Who has created it? An Indian mind has created it. Now, in each of these, what do you see? You are not just doing well because these are all successful businesses, by the way. They are making money. Yeah. But you are good for the people. Yes. The answer to your question is that when you say people are going to IT, I think I would broaden the scope to the entire digital world. Hmm. Then tell you that everything is going to get digital. Yeah. So conquer the whole world. I think we should start looking at that uh, uh, challenge in a completely different way. I mean, uh, for example, uh, you take right from footwear to textiles to this, that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The whole world is going to get uh, digitalized. Yeah. So let's say uh, we should get on board and have a proper orientation towards uh, where to apply uh, these ideas. You have to look at the societal problems and see what I can do. For example, if you look at, uh, uh, since you are in COP, you are doing robots, right? Yeah. You must be trained in robots, isn't it? Yeah. Industrial robots? Yes. Yeah. Now, one of the awardees in 2019, he, they were also trained in robots. They were students from Kerala. But what did they do? They created a startup called Bandicoot. And they were bothered by the fact that manhole, it kills the manual scavengers. You know, their life is not even 30. Their life is not even 30. They don't have dignity and all that. So they said, man in the hole, terrible. Why a man, uh, sort of, a, 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 a man should be in the hole. It should be much in the hole and man operate it. And they created robots, they're called bandicoots, you know, which go and do the cleaning much faster, much better. All right. And just imagine how transformation takes place. Yeah. Their children, the manual scavenger children, 
when they are asked previously about what does your father do they would say manual scavenger by putting their head down now they can put their head up and say robo operator yes <laughs> because those same people are now trained as robo operators mm -hmm. so the point is the skills that you learn like robo you know you can create them to destroy something on one hand you can uh, do that for some routine industrial operations but you can use them for um, uh, changing society transformation so students have to change their mindset and see what applications can i develop which will benefit the society that's basically what that's great <laughs> yeah that's great so uh, dr mashilgar thank you for taking out the time uh, to uh, inspire us actually <laughs> you talked about your life from the like from childhood and your uh people who inspired you and the challenges you face so thank you i would uh, end by giving you the five mashalkar mantras yes so without no lecture of mine is complete i do it every day <laughs> <We are laughs> yeah talking in kerala i give them uh, you know and so on kerala means i did not go to kerala from here only five mashalkar mantra first one aspirations are your possibilities keep them high like ncl we are all copying reverse engineering we raise the aspirations we become international chemical laboratory not national yes. and today they are exporting their knowledge mm -hmm. second particularly for young people of your age like instant coffee there is no instant success mm -hmm. you have to work hard okay i am 78 now i work 24 into 7 day after day week after week month after month year after year and will do so even when i be lost that's a second third purpose perseverance and passion you have to have a purpose in life okay not stop dhruvatara all right this is what you are trying to but for doing that you must have perseverance winners are never quitters quitters are never winners it is always too early to give up and you must do it with passion that is the third muscle karmanta the fourth about doors of opportunity i talked about already when they don't open how you create your own doors i gave the example and the fifth that the most important there is no limit to human endurance there is no limit to human achievement there is no limit to human imagination okay you saw in this pandemic that 15 year old girl jyoti prakash from bihar her father with a broken knee she put him on the bicycle and drove him for 1200 kilometers she cycled for 1200 kilometers in 8 days no limit to human endurance You you understand that now they are making a film on her life, okay. So what we have inside is tremendous the human spirit. I'll end with a personal story and as a last message. My great guru is Professor C N R Rao. He's a Bharat Ratna, as you know. You know Professor M M Sharma, him, and my mother, and Principal Bhave about whom we talked about. They are my four gurus. so you must have seen lesson on me on in the textbook where uh, this is 10 standard textbook you know where i describe these four gurus so let me tell you about that last guru when i became frs you know as i said it's a very high science prize you sign in the same book as newton did so i phoned up professor rao say sir i have become frs you know what was his response not bad <laughs> <laughs> Then I became fellow of American Academy of Arts and Science. This was established in 1780 by Benjamin Franklin and George Washington. And people like uh, Winston uh, Churchill and uh, uh, you know uh, whole range of people have become his fellow stone age Nobel laureates and all. But from 1780 till today, only seven Indians have become. I'm the I was the seventh. So I thought you will be very pleased. So I phoned phoned him up, sir. You know what was his response? Not bad. <laughs> Then, like you mentioned, U.S. National Academy of Inventors. You know, actually, they here you are the one of the third, seventh, etc. Here, I was the first from India. 
So I said, now he will definitely say, great. So I phoned him up. You know what was his response? Not bad. Then I got upset. I said, sir, what do I have to do to impress you? Then he gave me a lesson, and that is the lesson I want to leave the two of you, plus all the people who are watching. What he said is that, Shilkar, you are climbing on a ladder of excellence, and there is no limit to that ladder, excepting the limit that you put on it. What does that mean? That means no matter what honor you get, no matter what position in the company you get, no matter how much wealth you correct, no matter how many different uh, uh, you know, great things happen to you, you must always say, my best is yet to come. All right? Yes. So there has to be that divine discontent. So my message is whether you are 18 or 80, every day in the morning when you get up, you should say, my best is yet to come and maybe today will be the day. Well, Not but even when you are 89. And if you keep on doing that, and if all of us do that, you know, you can see what a new India we will have. You know, India of our dreams, India which will occupy its rightful position in the Committee of Nations, which I always say is up there. Okay? Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much Thank you, for your valuable lessons.